start our section. This is uh, one invited talk. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure to introduce our next invited speaker, Professor Rita Cucchiara from Universita University of Modena. Um, I have the opportunity to meet her in, uh, in 2007 uh, when she was the general chair of uh, traditional conference in Italy, the International Conference on Image Analysis and Processing, right? And uh, Ahita is a full professor in computer engineering uh, in University of Modena. Her current interests include pattern recognition and computer vision for video surveillance, magical imaging, and multimedia. Uh, she's involved in research on video annotation, uh, magical image. She's uh, developed some color analysis for skin lesions and melanoma classification. In video surveillance, uh, she's developed on new models of object segmentation, shadow detection, tracking, people beha behavioral analysis, for indoor and outdoor uh, applications. She also is responsible for of many Italian and uh, international projects. Uh, she's author of more than 200 papers in international journals, conferences, proceedings, and so on. She's participating in scientific committees of international conference like uh, CVPR, ICPR, and organize important conference and special tracks, right, in image processing multimedia. Uh, in 2007, she was the general chair of uh, ICAPI for the Italians. <laughs> and now in 2012, she is a chair of uh, TREC on pattern recognition applications of ICPR in Tokyo. Okay. So uh, I'm very glad to have you here. I know that you are enjoying Brazil. <laughs> okay. So this is a few. Um, please, uh, Luciano, stop me when uh, uh, it becomes too late for because uh, I'm sure that I'm not so synthetic in my presentation. So, uh, first of all, thanks uh, for everyone and thanks uh, for Luciano and for the other one to invite me here in Brazil because it's true, I enjoy a lot to, to see this. Uh, it's the first time for me to come in here and I'm sure that it's not the last one because I would like to come back uh, as soon as possible. So uh, before starting with my presentation, maybe I can present you where I am and what we are doing, uh, but I thanks for the presentation. Uh, I, uh, I'm working at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia uh, because we have two campuses. They are two cities very close to each other in Emilia-Romagna region, the red one in Italy, in the northern of Italy. And uh, uh, at the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, I am in the Department of Ingegneria into Ferrari because we have uh, just only one department for mechanical, civil, uh, uh, computer and electronic uh, engineering. And uh, within the department, uh, I'm uh, heading the image lab, uh, uh, research lab, uh, working in image processing, computer vision and pattern recognition. These are the four um, uh, topics uh, that we are covering, in particular security and surveillance. Maybe I'm working in this area since uh, 15 years. But now we have uh, also other projects that are started uh, in uh, multimedia for digital library and especially in Sersom network and embedded system. So before starting, uh, just an advertisement. If uh, there is someone, especially of young people, that would like to, to spend one year in Italy, at least, uh, please contact me. And uh, I will be very happy to give uh, this opportunity. So uh, my agenda. Uh, I try to, to do a presentation not in general about people's surveillance or people's security because it's too much, but to concentrate on just only two problems, that is people detection and people re-identification. Why these two projects? Because maybe it's something that we are working a lot in the last uh, four or five years, 
but especially because I like that in both of these projects uh, there is a dichotomy that is uh, always present between the need to, of using uh, 2D and 3D models, uh, and so also a priori knowledge about this, uh, and uh, instead the, the need or the opportunity to use a lot of machine learning, especially every, you know, that in the last years, uh, uh, most of the, the uh, techniques that we are using in computer vision are very mixed with uh, um, uh, paradigms coming from machine learning. So uh, people analysis, uh, recognition, uh, and people detection is very pervasive in many applications. Uh, surveillance, of course, uh, uh, real-time detection, uh, safety, and forensic. Surveillance and forensics are very similar for the topic, but very different for the constraints. Surveillance uh, near the real time, uh, while instead in forensics uh, you can have time, you can do uh, offline uh, uh, tasks. But at the same time, in surveillance very often you have a constrained world, you can calibrate camera, uh, uh, have a hypothesis of fixed camera, instead in forensics uh, maybe you have images that you, come, you, you don't know where they come from. And uh, uh, as uh, not only security, but also in multimedia. For instance, uh, in sport analysis, you need a lot of people detection and people analysis. And uh, I put also the third pro problem, because in Europe, uh, the next uh, Horizon 2020 uh, uh, project will be concerning well-being a lot uh, for retail analysis, comfort in architecture, so detecting where the people are going, uh, that what the people are, are doing uh, to create, uh, to to design new architecture, for building automation, for entertaining, uh, and for many other applications. This is just only uh, some example of what uh, we are doing. Uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, for instance, that one uh, is an example of people detection in supermarket. Uh, the other one are people detection and analysis in working uh, position. The other one is that that one uh, is something uh, that we did uh, with the Italian policy for uh, analyzing the behavior of that people, that one that uh, uh, have to be recognized for their uh, biometric, not biometric, soft biometric aspects, like for instance, uh, the, the type of dresses or something like this. And uh, okay, now I would like to start uh, discussing with you some uh, um, fixed point. The first fixed point that you know that video surveillance started uh, uh, I think uh, 15 years ago, but after uh, 11 uh, September, uh, uh, you know, of uh, 11 years ago, uh, there was an increase of interest in all the parts of the Europe. Uh, I was very surprised uh, uh, discussing uh, about this uh, with IBM, uh, that uh, the, all the program in IBM about surveillance started the day after the 90, uh, the 11 September. And now IBM is one of the best and the larger producer of system of uh, video surveillance in the world. And, uh, and I think that as well as this, uh, another mm, starting point uh, instead was uh, a special issue uh, of transaction of pattern analysis and machine intelligence of 2000. That was the first special issue regarding uh, people uh, uh, surveillance. So especially for young one, start of this work, uh, uh, coming from a lot of uh, US uh, university, working about uh, detection, tracking, and so on, uh, about people analysis. And this is a typical uh, um, mainstream of the research of, uh, of the last 10 years. Uh, it's a typical uh, mm, top-down research, uh, acquisition, single, multiple camera, detection, moving object detection with background suppression and everything like this. And then tracking, linear prediction, uh, generative and uh, stochastic prediction, and then understanding uh, very purposes. So we would like to understand if there are two people that are working together or something like this. I think instead that uh, in this new um, part in the, in the last uh, uh, years, uh, there are a, a shift, uh, a shift in the interest a and a shift in knowledge about uh, what we can do. And so uh, I try to put together uh, this name because uh, I think that there are many inferences and interference coming from other fields. For instance, uh, detection and tracking now are very related to each other with the spatial and temporal reasoning. And also learning and inferring uh, the, all the things that the other community in big data analysis are doing 
about clustering, about classification. Now we can use directly also in surveillance and uh, searching the recognizing also using the human feedback. Uh, it's not the time to say we have to do everything uh, automatically, but also the especially in forensics, uh, the possibility to include the knowledge and the interest of human is very interesting uh, and also in this part. So uh, with uh, this general umbrella, I would like just only to, to put uh, my, uh, my interest in, in uh, two or three points, detection and re-identification as an example of two, the most important uh, problem we have uh, in, uh, in people analysis. First, uh, people detection. Uh, we um, uh, also yesterday, you had some paper here about uh, this kind of problem. And the, uh, you know the problem, uh, extracting image and video something, uh, a specific shape uh, that can be classified uh, as people. Independently if it's a true people or is just uh, an artificial uh, people, uh, but uh, the idea of a shape of people. This is false. Nobody do um, uh, people detection now. Most of the research lab in the world are doing pedestrian detection. This is different to people detection because uh, 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 most of us assume that the people are uh, in, uh, uh, in vertical position uh, and maybe you are walking or are assisting in this one because uh, this is the model that is uh, easier to be uh, identified. And uh, also in uh, this area of pedestrian detection, there has been a shift during the last uh, years uh, from a model-based vision to a learning-based vision. At the beginning, the first uh, work, not this, is, this is was uh, one of my work, uh, but it was more related to with the tracking, but the first uh, work about uh, people detection uh, uh, addressed the idea of we have a model of the people because there is a head that is uh, ellipsoidic, there is a cylinder or something like this, and looking around if, you f if we find something like this. And then you can use, m for instance, articulate model, articulate model and graph matching, uh, uh, like uh, in this work uh, that we did uh, with Marcello Pelillo of University of Venezia, looking for uh, the possibility to recognize uh, the, uh, the shape of people, even the camera is moving, or just only inferring that there are some parts uh, that uh, can be part of a human and are connected. And uh, this idea of uh, model detection is an uh, idea is uh, uh, to, uh, to have the possibility to, uh, to give a model not only of the people, but a model of the scene, a model of the motion, a model of the interaction. This is an ex uh, another example of something uh, we can do if we have a model of the people. We say people is something that is vertical, is, that is going around, and we can detect uh, the, the, the support points uh, uh, in homographic view like that one, or uh, the head uh, position with the people are lying. So this is uh, an example of uh, detection and tracking uh, of uh, people with multiple camera with uh, overlap at the field of view. Uh, you know, in this case, uh, that is a typical uh, surveillance uh, environment and surveillance scenario, you have a lot uh, of, uh, uh, I don't say constraint, but uh, initial hypothesis. Uh, you, you know the camera, you know everything. But instead, uh, in the last uh, four or five years, uh, most of the work uh, related with the people detection are based on learning. Based on learning, we say, okay, I, I don't care about the model of the people, but I know that uh, the people is easier to be recognized because uh, we are so used to see uh, it around. And so we can use uh, classifier and learning system to learn that. Uh, we know that uh, the problem so is moved, uh, not about the model, about uh, which kind of feature we can use, which kind of classifier we can use. So yeah, I just only, uh, put here some name or something that is very well known, OG covariance, uh, integral channel with dollar and perona, uh, model bay descriptor, and uh, friends and ball and the other ones that uh, uh, can be, can be um, detected. I think that is not a tutorial and most of you know uh, uh, everything about uh, uh, histogram of, uh, gauge, uh, uh, of gradients. Uh, this is one of the most famous uh, uh, people detector, also maybe because it's an open CV, so everyone can use uh, directly uh, in, uh, uh, there is uh, the, the software in open CV that can be used. So uh, image, uh, the image is divided in the many windows uh, in a sliding window manner. Uh, in each window we can detect uh, 
some, uh, uh, some feature like uh, the histogram of gradient, then we put together all in a super vector machine to classify if uh, there is a people or not. Uh, other method is that the using cascade of classifier, very useful, uh, add a boost, a logic boost, or something like this. So you use uh, a lot of uh, weak classifier in a cascade uh, in, in, uh, in a such manner to have the first classifier that are able to eliminate a lot uh, of, uh, of uh, false example. And just only if you arrive at the end of, of the chain, uh, you say, okay, this is the people. And this is something that uh, is uh, very well known too because it's uh, uh, the covariant descriptor that has been proposed by Peter Mayer, uh, Porikli, and uh, Tuzel in the PhD uh, work of Tuzel, and uh, has been uh, presented in PAMI three years ago, I think. And uh, the problem is that it's in a Riemannian manifold, and so it's a computational uh, uh, a little uh, problematic, but uh, you can use uh, to detect people. So using hog uh, covariance or many other, what uh, is the result? These are typical results uh, where you have a lot of correct section, but you have a lot of false positive too. You have uh, some under, the, uh, under segmentation. Under segmentation in surveillance is a very big project problem because if you don't have the head, if you don't have the, the, the hand, maybe you can not do uh, action analysis or something like that. So this is a problem that normally is a, uh, is not considered enough, and you have false negative uh, over segmentation and so on. So, uh, just to finish this um, tutorial part, uh, I suggest you, if you are not uh, uh, so familiar with this problem, to, to read especially the new um, pedestrian detection evaluation of the state of the art, uh, this work of Pietro Perona and the other one that uh, uh, has, been has been published on PAMI, I think, in January or on, on February of this year. And then there are many other um, uh, uh, surveys, uh, also that one about uh, um, specific uh, pedestrian detection. This is an example of how many type of different detector you can have with the different uh, feature with the different learning. But, and uh, also with different results in, term in, uh, in, uh, in terms uh, of speed uh, and in terms uh, of accuracy. And, but uh, what is one common problem uh, to every uh, classifier, people detector classifier? The problem is about uh, the selection of the region of interest. Because sometimes what you can do is to do a pre-segmentation. Maybe in, in surveillance you can say, okay, I take just only the things that are in motion. And so you can do a, a, a pre-segmentation by, uh, by motion. Or you can use uh, uh, depth in order to, to have a pre-segmentation by depth. But in general, most of the, the large majority of uh, the system proposes a sliding window paradigm. That you know, the sliding window paradigm say, okay, I take every possible windows, uh, small or large, uh, in every possible, uh, in every possible uh, position uh, in order to, to have uh, uh, all the information I have. We have two problems. The first problem is computational time because in such manner you can have uh, many, many windows. And the second problem is that you can have a lot uh, of uh, uh, false positive. This is an example of one project uh, that uh, we, uh, we had in Modena uh, two, started two years ago, that in this real case, uh, you have a lot of things uh, that are similar to people. And so in this case, uh, using a sliding windows approach uh, or using other traditional approach, uh, uh, have some problem to, uh, to arrive at a good solution. And uh, this is an example, uh, I'm sorry if it's small, but I can uh, leave uh, the slide after, of how many windows you need to, to, to have a good classifier. The typical classifier, pedestrian classifier, but also by car, by face, and the other one, use uh, 100 of uh, 1,000 of uh, windows for each image to detect uh, people or to detect face. Too much, too much, both for computational and for accuracy uh, reason. And for this reason, uh, there are many uh, many new proposals that try to do to use uh, either contextual information, 
typical contextual information, uh, if you have, uh, is uh, the uh, perspective or geometry information. If you have a calibration of camera, if you know what you are watching, you can decide the typical size of people. Or, but uh, uh, the other more general approach instead uh, is uh, uh, the possibility of exploring subspace uh, of windows. In this case, I, I put uh, the, the ascent of four of them. There are uh, some works uh, that using branch and round uh, optimization. Other one that use uh, deterministic multigrid or deterministic multi uh, uh, pyramidal uh, analysis. But uh, I would like to spend uh, some, uh, in, uh, some slides uh, to present you something that we, uh, we proposed uh, uh, one uh, years ago, that is uh, the result of uh, a PhD program of Giovanni Gualdi, one of my students. And uh, I'm happy because it uh, has been uh, published on PAMI this month, uh, so it's very new. And uh, the, uh, the basic idea is uh, not looking around uh, uh, if it's not necessary, and uh, to propose uh, a multi-stage particle windows. That is very general because you can use for uh, people, but you can use for face, you can use for vehicle, or you can use uh, for object detection. And uh, uh, the, ba the basic idea is not looking around uh, in a uniform manner, but to try to estimate uh, the probability distribution of function that say where uh, there is a, a more probability to find, uh, to find the people. Uh, why it could work? Uh, it works because uh, our model we are looking for, like uh, people, is symmetric. Uh, and uh, not only symmetric, but there is a large region of support of positive detection. That means that maybe if this is uh, the correct detection, also all of them are not so bad. So if are not so bad, you can look around. And this is actually true because we, we did uh, a lot of, of uh, experiment, for instance, using uh, the famous Viola Jones for face, uh, using the, the classifier of uh, Pietro Perona, the hog, uh, the, using the covariance of Quarikli and the other one. And what you can see there, maybe I have a larger one, uh, is that uh, in this example, we, uh, we selected 100 of uh, images uh, in uh, the Pascal uh, data set. We align in order to have the people in, in the middle and looking uh, uh, what happens if you don't take uh, exactly the middle, but you take uh, the detection around. So if you start uh, with, a, uh, with a position like this of the windows, uh, maybe you will have an, uh, an answer that can give you a suggestion to go around uh, and to, to find the exact position. And this is because the, mm, the new things, uh, very, very simple, is that you can have the detection response of your classifier. If you're using feedback, the detection response of your classifier, you can create uh, the uh, PDF uh, that say where you can look for. Um, two different possibilities uh, without using a lot of formula. One is very simple. In a cascade uh, classifier, you can, uh, uh, you can uh, see when your classified uh, is stopped. If you have 30, mm, 40, for instance, uh, uh, weak classifier in cascade, and your cascade classifier stopped 10, okay, uh, your response is 10 over 40. Very, very simple. In a super vector machine, you need a, a, a little uh, more complicated uh, uh, answer, but it's just only an, a number that is beto uh, between zero and one. And this is something uh, with some images that we are proposing. We start, we estimate the object detection as a PDF. So first of all, we do a uniform quantization. Uniform quantization, that means not in a grid, but in, in a uniform uh, uh, probability of distribution. And in the first step, uh, we put some particle. For this reason, we call particle windows because it's uh, very similar to the idea of particle filtering that uh, we use in tracking. We, uh, we, we put some particle, but uh, uh, an order of magnitude less than the typical uh, sliding window. And then uh, we use assign a Gaussian kernel to, uh, to each sample. We compute a classifier. We, we see the answer. We create uh, the, the PDF. We estimate a PDF, uh, and after this, we propose a new distribution. So in the second layer, you have the black distribution. In the third layer, the, the pink one. 
the green one, the blue one, and so at the end. And so at the end, you are able to find, uh, after just only three, four, five uh, uh, steps, uh, you can have uh, a good uh, mm, uh, search uh, for this uh, uh, position. These are some results that you can find in the paper, but maybe also I can discuss with you. This is an example with uh, the Adam family for face uh, with Viola Jones. And these are some uh, other examples with uh, many different um, databases. Uh, I think that uh, one of the, mm, the best uh, things uh, is that you can use less, uh, 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 less uh, number of, uh, of windows, but also that is very precise because you find exactly the size and the position so uh, in for surveillance and for other parts, uh, this is interesting. Uh, of course, th you can use uh, also for starting a tracking, so for uh, in a video, because the result of one image uh, you can use for uh, another one, uh, like in uh, this video. And uh, uh, look, for instance, uh, that one is not pedestrian, because in a position that is not typical of a pedestrian. And for this reason, in some uh, frame uh, you can detect it, in another frame you cannot detect. But th this is uh, just enough, depending on your application. In our case, uh, our application was uh, uh, okay. that one to detect uh, if the people have the helmet or not the helmet. And so it was enough to, to, to see the, the position of the people just only uh, every few frames or something like this. And this is something that we finished in collaboration with uh, our region. Of course, you can apply this also in other fields. This is a thing that uh, I'm sure you know better than mine. Uh, this is a possibility to have uh, to, to, to track uh, people uh, in uh, the mm, uh, in a soccer uh, uh, situation. Uh, this is an example of uh, a product that uh, uh, Vision uh, is. It is a spin-off of my university. is created and now is uh, uh, selling in collaboration with some Italian teams uh, to 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 analyze uh, uh, the possibility of player to to play better. I, I don't want to spend more time about this, but uh, if, uh, uh, if you understand well, uh, this is something that you can do. Of course, uh, after pedestrian detection, you can do a lot of other things. Uh, just uh, one slide to, to show you a new things that we are doing because it's uh, necessary for re-identification. That is uh, the possibility to look at, to classify the orientation of people. Maybe as in the presentation of uh, 10 minutes ago about a gender analysis, uh, you can define the gender with the frontal face, uh, or you can detect the cars uh, in different position. But then the problem is that you would like also to understand which is the orientation of people uh, using with uh, tracking maybe or without. Uh, normally typical uh, approaches until now work in just only the four main uh, direction. Instead, also the other direction are interesting. Here, um, one, uh, another mm, PhD student, Davide Baltieri, working uh, in my lab, uh, is uh, mm, presenting this one in the next uh, ECCV uh, in Italy in October. That is uh, uh, European Conference Computer Vision. This is about the possibility to have uh, um, orientation of and the results uh, in this case uh, are, are, not, uh, are not bad, especially because normally for this project, the results are normally very bad. So look at, for instance, this is an example of something uh, we, we um, obtain for different data set. There are many different data set. And what you can say, maybe you can see better in that one, is that uh, uh, in the upper part of the body, there is the ground through. In the, in the second part of the body, there is the result. So if uh, the color is different, uh, you see that there is a mistake, just uh, to understand. And uh, what you can see uh, is that uh, the east, uh, north, west, and south, uh, south is not so good. But uh, west, north, and east are very good. Uh, instead, the, the other one are not enough. But using this together with tracking uh, um, allows to improve uh, the situation. Okay, now uh, how much time I have? One quarter, uh, uh, 15 minutes, so uh, 20 minutes, very good. Uh, so uh, for people detection, we have to say a lot of things, uh, which is the best classifier, uh, but uh, I think that now uh, 
so many group in the world are working in this area that the results are very interesting now and very stable. But the problem instead is uh, what you can do after people detection. You can do tra tracking, we, we can do biometric identification if you have enough number of pixels, if you have enough, uh, uh, enough information. But uh, I like a lot uh, the problem of re-identification. Re the problem of uh, re-identification is very simple, called, uh, very often uh, uh, it's called also reacquisition. Give the same label, the same tag to the same people. I don't know maybe who is this people, but it's just only to understand uh, if uh, the people uh, 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 has been seen before. Like for instance, uh, uh, re-identification as a recognition to answer, have you seen this person before? Uh, typical of surveillance or so of forensics. But you can use re-identification, uh, this is an example, just only to say, I have a database uh, of uh, pre-identified, uh, uh, watching list of pre-identified people by just only the aspect, uh, the type of dress you have in this moment, uh, and a few other cues, and uh, to say, okay, this people is one of the one that uh, uh, it was in uh, this room before or not, and, uh, and also you can use for different camera. The second problem is that uh, you can use re-identification as semi-supervised tracking. This is very interesting, uh, because uh, tracking is uh, still an open problem. There are uh, so many applications of tracking, but tracking is very difficult. Uh, uh, problem and sometimes you have uh, some situation like this in a complicated situation with crowd uh, situation like this uh, and maybe you have uh, the possibility to see the people just only every five frames because of occlusion because you don't have the video or so on and so on you can use identification uh, we use an approach based uh, on uh, uh, transductive learning so se semi-supervised learning to, uh, with a spectral graph uh, to look at the correspondence between one of the other. And uh, also you can use re-identification in forensics uh, as a search. And the search uh, in large repository like this. As I told you before, I have just only one slide about, uh, about this problem. This is an interface we, um, we use uh, uh, in Modena, not only for people detection, also for artistic database, but uh, it's very simple. As, uh, and we can, uh, uh, we have a touch screen, and so we can uh, uh, rearrange, uh, use relevant feedback or human in order to see, okay, I like uh, these uh, people, I would like to see all the other aspects that are similar to this, please give me the other one that uh, 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 are similar. Maybe uh, I have some, uh, uh, some video about, uh, about uh, this interface, uh, if you are interested after. But just uh, as, um, final uh, uh, topic, instead I would like to concentrate on the first problem. The first problem is about uh, re-identification as recognition. And uh, while in uh, uh, detection and also in tracking and in search, uh, learning is very important, I believe that in uh, recognition, the idea of model, the a priori model we have about people is still very important. And uh, it's stupid not to use uh, the knowledge we have uh, if we can use it. And so for this reason, I think, uh, not only I, but uh, uh, we think that uh, using uh, um, 2D and 3D model for doing re-identification could be very useful. Uh, this is just only an histogram uh, uh, that uh, shows you how many papers have been published in the last uh, 10 years about people re-identification. So, this is uh, the, the new fashion uh, uh, topic because in the just early last year uh, we, um, we look at about uh, 15 important uh, papers about uh, re-identification. So it's a problem uh, that is uh, in this moment uh, very, uh, um, very interesting. And also in this case, there are so many different applications that we try to do uh, a small survey about this. So what you can see, first of all, there are many solution space. First of all, there are different approaches that uh, uh, address the problem with a single camera. So you come in this room and then you come back in this room. Or with the joint camera. With the joint cameras, you have a big problem about car camera calibration in color, for instance, uh, that are very different in indoor or outdoor, like something like this. Or overlapped cameras where you can use uh, uh, geometric information. We have uh, 
different approaches they're using single shot of multiple shot that means just only one image of the people of uh, a sequence of images of the people if you are tracking and uh, uh, approaches that use body model 2d model and 3d body model and especially many different proposal uh, referring uh, which kind of signature you are using color texture position soft biometry, like for instance the type of dress you have. In general, most of the work are using color. Uh, because uh, look, uh, re-identification means uh, not biometrics, just only to see if uh, uh, I can recognize him because he's a, uh, as a dress uh, all gray or another one that uh, is in red or in other situation. But uh, of course, color often is not enough. So a lot of uh, texture-based uh, uh, a detector using SIFT, uh, SURF, and, uh, uh, and many other uh, detectors uh, are uh, very useful. One of uh, the best workers uh, uh, in uh, uh, re-identification in the last uh, two years, I think, uh, is uh, this work uh, that come uh, from uh, uh, my good friend Vittorio Murino and the other one uh, of uh, University of uh, Verona and in Genova. This was uh, the first version that was being published uh, in ICPR uh, two years ago and, uh, uh, and used a symmetry model and 2D models about people. This model has been uh, refined and so now there is uh, a, uh, a new, uh, there was a, a new uh, proposal the, of the same year uh, that uh, have been presented on CDPR. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, what uh, most of uh, the approaches do using the 2D idea of the model. The 2D idea of the body model is very simple, comes from Leonardo da Vinci, the uh, famous uh, division of, uh, the, of the people body in three parts. Uh, actually, Leonardo in uh, Divina Proporzione said that the head is just only one eighth of uh, the body, but uh, in re-identification, we normally use 20% because uh, so you can use also the hair or other parts. And also this is the division typical of uh, occidental dress uh, that, that, well, that you cannot use uh, in other, uh, other applications. But the new approaches instead uh, of using fixed parts, uh, try to learn uh, which are the best uh, um, segmentation of the body in order to do a local matching. Uh, why? Because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important not to confuse uh, people with uh, uh, jeans uh, and the white uh, uh, t-shirt with someone with uh, a blue t-shirt and one uh, white uh, trouser. So uh, this is a typical uh, ap uh, application in 2D, but uh, in the last period also 3D models are becoming very interesting. One of the first uh, attempt of using the 3D models have been presented uh, six years ago by uh, Mohan Trivedi and other one uh, uh, using a very simplified uh, 3D models. The staff told you say, okay, if you have a people uh, you can see the people in different position, you can open uh, this uh, situation in a cylindric manner and you have this kind of signature, 3D signature, mm -hmm. uh, very approximated 3D signature to compare, but it's working very well in, uh, uncos in constraint system. And this is something that we would like to present that we are doing uh, in our lab. This is a not concluded uh, work because it's a part of the work of one of my PhD students. And the idea is to create a very simplified mm, model of, uh, uh, of human body in order to improve uh, the, um, the identification. So these are the constraints. First of all, uh, uh, we need tracking. So we need tracking and possible calibration or auto calibration in order to have the idea of the head of the people. And then uh, uh, we use local color histogram in each point. What do we do? Uh, first, uh, we create uh, a very simplified people model, taking uh, uh, some, uh, uh, a lot of uh, images like that uh, in order to, to have uh, the idea of uh, how the people uh, normally, the pose of people going around, look, it's not uh, perfectly uh, vertical, uh, so we, we created uh, this kind uh, of model by example. And, uh, uh, and so we created this very sarcophagus-like uh, uh, model with uh, very few points. 
We use just only 600 points, uh, that is, uh, I know for uh, some of you that are working in computer graphics, uh, is something very trivial, but if you want to work uh, in real time, uh, 60 points are just enough. Uh, six, uh, sorry, 600 of points are just enough. For uh, every model, we have uh, um, uh, two information. The first information is the height of the people, and the, second, the second information is for each vertex uh, of, uh, of the object. You have some uh, descriptors, the uh, average color, the histogram of color in this area in order to take into account uh, not only this point uh, but also the point around, and other two um, interesting uh, value, theta, theta i is uh, the optical radiability. What does it mean? is that, uh, as I show you in the next uh, slide, when you create uh, this model, you can say, okay, this point is sure, is uh, something that I'm seeing, or maybe I'm not so sure. So this uh, point takes into account uh, the reliability of the measure you have. And the second one uh, is the saliency of the vertex. What does it mean, saliency? If I take a database of these images and I look, uh, for instance, every one of us, Maybe this area is interesting because uh, there are some of you that has uh, written a uh, sieve graphy and the other one, no? so this is a very salient with respect to maybe this area that is black for everyone. And so for this reason, we use also this uh, number. And uh, so at the beginning, uh, when I start to, to detect the shape, uh, I start to initialize this model. Uh, using the 3D model is aligned uh, with the uh, G2T shape. And, uh, we do a projection of the Im to the image to the 3D model, and for this reason I need the orientation, because I, I must to, to learn where. If I have tracking, I have trajectory information I, I can do, but if I have not uh, tracking because the people is still, uh, I need to have an information about the orientation. And then, uh, uh, having this appearance model, I can create uh, this kind of sarcophagus. If I have just only one image, uh, I, I can do the hypothesis of symmetry, and I put uh, uh, these images in all the, the position of the body, but with the different uh, reliability of the point. Instead, if I have more uh, information, I can do in a 3D. Uh, not only for one uh, people, but we proposed this uh, in Barcelona ICCD last year, also for uh, uh, more people. Many of you will recognize the PETS data set here the ones that most of you uh, of we use. And then, after that, what we do? We do a comparison and re-identification, not only you know, 2D with the 2D, but 3D with the 3D. And so, in this manner, we can not have just only a global information, but a very local information. They say, okay, I'm different to him, because I am not a beer. <laughs> I have some, some point here, or, or maybe we are similar because all of us uh, have the glasses and so on. And we use uh, two different, um, we use uh, a distance uh, between histograms. The distance between histograms uh, is weighted uh, with the weight that take into account uh, both the saliency and the reliability. And uh, uh, so at the end, uh, we have an, a, in a situation like this one that I can show with uh, a small video. Okay. This is uh, the model generation that I presented you before. We, we, uh, we selected a subset of, uh, of examples, sorry, this is in Italian. So we created the model, uh, we uh, subsample the vertex. So there are some preliminary tests. So you do the initialization of the model, put in that one. Look, this is the... Um, 2D to 3D mapping uh, of uh, the image uh, in, uh, in this very simplified method. Um, okay, you can add uh, uh, additional views of this to create a model uh, offline for data set, uh, online for uh, the training set or during real time uh, we are doing. And whenever you have a new one, you try to find which is uh, the most similar with respect uh, to this image. Okay, I can, uh, I can skip some part uh, of this uh, and say, uh, okay, this is a, uh, uh, okay. When uh, a people is starting, uh, this is an example of 
lovely, the PhD students that is uh, going around uh, in, uh, in, in my campus. And this is the idea of sarcophagus that is a method uh, on, the, uh, on the image. And uh, we do also tracking, so we have uh, the hypothesis of the orientation. This is, uh, by the way, the, my university, so you can show the, you can, uh, you can see our campus uh, with uh, 3D reconstruction uh, uh, of, uh, of the campus that has been done. You know, the, uh, in a surveillance, you can have this information because uh, the camera can be calibrated or auto-calibrated, and so in order to have the 3D information, if something. And so uh, what you can say here is uh, the one camera uh, detection and the other one is the 3D reconstruction uh, that uh, is done in real time during uh, the, um, the information we have. And so at the end, uh, okay, at the end we do the re-identification. Re-identification, as I told you, we can do also in uh, uh, other type of videos with many people and uh, with uh, uh, if you have uh, the information of the camera. Uh, just to finish, uh, some, uh, okay, close this. Uh, some results uh, about this. They are preliminary, but not so preliminary because uh, 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 we, we spent two years in this work, so now uh, David uh, and the other did uh, a lot of experimentation. There are so many data sets you can use, but a few of them uh, have a different view of the same people. So if you would like to have something that is real, you, you, can, uh, you must have this. And so uh, uh, among the other, I would like to, to, to show you uh, our uh, data set that is online that contain uh, uh, 600 of video of uh, 200 of different people that uh, we manually segmented, so it was a big uh, work that we did uh, in a European project and now is uh, available, that is uh, called the 3D Pass. Uh, there is www.openvisor.org uh, um, uh, website where you can find uh, a lot of video, not only that one, uh, but also other data set uh, for instance, data set for shadow analysis, uh, data set uh, for tracking. Uh, so please visit uh, this uh, uh, website if you want. And so this is uh, uh, some result. Uh, simple result, uh, just only 50 people. But 50 people, 50 typical Italian students that are all equal. Look, uh, these are three different people, but uh, with the uh, <laughs> same address. Uh, but you can recognize uh, each other because uh, you have a different position of, uh, of the t-shirt, of the skirt, and the trousers. So you have the possibility to recognize the difference because you look at local position and not the global information. Instead, these are some uh, new uh, uh, measure comparing 2D and the 3D uh, uh, models. Uh, the blue one is this uh, 3D, of course. Uh, that, uh, I'm presenting you is, uh, the, of course, the best. And, uh, um, but uh, the other one uh, are, uh, the first one is using just only a single shot, so just only a single image. Or the second one, the green, uh, is using multiple shots. That means uh, it, don't do, uh, it doesn't do uh, 3D reconstruction, but use a lot of view of the same people. So in such a manner, it's not different. Uh, we, we are a little better because we use uh, local feature instead of uh, global feature. But, uh, uh, now we are using uh, this uh, approach not only for uh, academic purposes but also for uh, real application and especially for doing uh, search by similarity with uh, some cameras that are installed. Actually, we, we have a project with uh, the municipality of Modena that uh, it started just only after two years because of problem of privacy that uh, maybe I'm sure you, you uh, are common also here in Brazil. Uh, but uh, we put some cameras uh, around the stadium, uh, the football stadium in Modena, to try to recognize uh, the aspect of the people when they arrive before going in the stadium and when they are inside the stadium maybe with the same dress but uh, different things uh, in uh, in the head or a different part of this. And, uh, and so the, we have the problem with the different cameras because unfortunately the color calibration, as I told you, is 
a, a, a big problem. So concluding, concluding uh, it's not a conclusion, it's just only to say that uh, we have a lot of things to do. For pedestrian detection, we have some fixed point, but pedestrian detection is not enough, huh? because I would like to recognize you, but you are sitting in, in, on the chair, so pedestrian detection doesn't work in, the, uh, in this uh, reason. And there is a lot of work uh, for occluded uh, part. For instance, uh, in, the, uh, in the survey of uh, Pietro Perona in, uh, uh, in PAMI, there is a lot of measure for occluded people too, and also the possibility to reconstruct the 3D information just only for one image. And for people identification, re-identification and search, uh, here there is a, a sea of things to do, especially for 2D and 3D visual information, to create effective services and effective application, and also to use, uh, to work with uh, small data. Okay, as is concluding, this is uh, are the name of people working uh, in my lab with me, and uh, I would like to thank them for uh, all the work uh, that we did together. Thanks. Thank you, Rita. Questions? I'd like to say that I enjoyed so much your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, after some experience with pedestrian detection, I can realize that um, the features that you use in the framework of classification is more important than the classify. Yeah. And uh, you could see that uh, uh, there's not so many room to improve the classifiers until now. Uh, do you agree with this, um, this idea? I, ca I cannot uh, see what ca I can do to improve the classifier so yeah. much, but the, the features have too much and then you can yeah. fuse feature information and, yeah. and so yeah, forth. I, I agree with you. I think that uh, I don't want to, 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 to be here to say everything about classifier, but you know that neural network uh, of uh, one uh, group of, uh, uh, of people working with are a linear classifier in such a manner and are very good. But in the last period, I think that uh, most of the results uh, have been provided by super vector machine and cascade of super vector machine or cascade of classifier. The idea of using weak classifier, I think uh, add a boost and logic boost are very uh, interesting and uh, are so spread that I think that is uh, a, a good conclusion. Instead, about the feature, it uh, depends. For instance, uh, if you look for pedestrian, uh, our shape, it's uh, easy to be recognized by border. So uh, uh, histogram of gradient or something like this are good. But you start, uh, if you start to look for people sitting or for other part, uh, I see that other features could be more interesting too, like uh, uh, based Coverance or, descriptors um, are very yeah, good. Yeah, uh, texture descriptor. For instance, there is uh, one interesting work that I've been presented this year in CVPR by the group in Berkeley of uh, Gendra Malik and last year also about poslet. Uh, poslet are a small part of the body that can be used to recognize uh, the pose of the people, like that one or maybe like that one and so on. And so you can use the poslet as the descriptor also. So I think in, there is uh, a lot of things. But uh, to conclude, uh, you know, one thing is, uh, are the real, uh, the real application and one thing are the academic uh, uh, competition. And so since uh, most of the work in people uh, in pedestrian description use the same data set, uh, Pascal and you know, many other, the one of Perona that have been presented in CVPR two years, three years ago and so on, in this kind of data set, every result is around 92, 93%. So I don't think there is a room to, to improve more. But I think instead that in real application, there is a lot of work to do. If I'm not wrong, I think Perona was yeah. the one that created the two twenty-five thousand yeah. data sets, yeah, frames true. data set, and it yeah. was very interesting for Benchmark because I think he proved that, the, for example, Hog SVM uh, had uh, six percent only in this <laughs> in this framework <laughs> in this data set. <laughs> okay, uh, now uh, I I think that uh, uh, you know that. Uh, 
uh, there are so many collaboration between group. For instance, the group of Pietro Perona that is in Caltech is working with the other group of, uh, of Professor Scheer and the other one, so they created one data set, uh, also in comparison with the OG and the other one. But I like uh, that work because uh, uh, if we don't have uh, public benchmark, we cannot measure each other, so I think it's very important to have it. Now I think we, we have to, to, to go in the next step uh, and to have some commercial data set and not only academic, like in ferret uh, in, uh, in uh, face recognition. Because you know that now there are so many uh, industrial uh, products that start to use pedestrian detection. For instance, uh, in the car, uh, the Mercedes car, the, B, uh, uh, the BMW cars use pedestrian detection in the car. And so for this reason, but they use also the depth the information, they start to have data set. Uh, uh, the one of Gabriela, for instance, uh, uh, Gabriela that uh, is uh, from University of uh, Amsterdam, but also for Daniel Chrysler, has uh, this kind of data set. Thank you. Thanks for the no nice talk. Uh, I was wondering, uh, for the pedestrian tracking, like in the soccer example you mm -hmm. just showed, do you have any specific treatment for confusion situations like goals or collaboration? Uh, okay, no. There are two things. Uh, the first one uh, for goal, for uh, maybe I have some video, um, we worked a lot with the group of University of Florence uh, three or four years ago. Uh, to do different compression in video of uh, soccer video. And for instance, in this case, uh, we, you can use the information of the optical fall flow uh, field of the camera maker. That, for instance, when you have uh, a goalkeeper or when you have some specific situation, you have a zoom in that area or not. And so we use uh, this kind of trick. So we use not only the static cameras, but also the moving camera from broadcast in order to understand if there is something interesting or not. So in specific, uh, the University of Florence created the classifier to, create the, to understand the important event. We have a paper together in transactional multimedia. This is one thing. But instead, as we discussed together yesterday, I think that there are so many situations in which you have nothing to do. Just for instance, when you have two people with the same dress, because yeah, I don't know why, but in, uh, in soccer, everyone uh, uses uh, 11 and 11, I, I learned uh, by my son that have the same, uh, uh, the same dress, but not the goalkeeper. And so when you have two people that stay together, what you can do? Tracking doesn't work. Uh, maybe people detect working enough. In this case, uh, now, mm, the, the people of my company just only look uh, about how many people are in that group. So, okay, two people, three people, wait a, lo a little, and then come back. Because uh, the, mm, the goal uh, is not to track everything, uh, but just only to have any information during the, um, during, uh, the coaching time, uh, during uh, the training phase. As I told with him yesterday, uh, we had also in this case the GPS information because we asked some soccer player to put the GPS so in order to have the ground so There is another question there. Thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, first, I have a, a more technical question, then I have a comment. Uh, so in the optimization, you do the reduc reduction of search space uh, where you have particles. Yeah. So do you still need to run in multiple scales to find the pedestrian, or you can just run in one scale and, and you get them? <laughs> if you are lucky, it's just not enough one uh, one OK, layer. so you no, still I'm need joking. to. Uh, using just only one layer, is uh, uh, we, we give a uniform uh, uh, position is like using uh, sliding window with the less number of slides. But uh, instead we did a lot of experiments uh, and we see that uh, you have the possibility to converge in very few layers, so three, four, not more than five, because uh, at the end uh, if you use more than five uh, you, you have a convergence in, uh, in a wrong position, it's just enough. Because you have to, to understand, uh, uh, 
uh, there is a, a trade-off between uh, the basin of attraction you have uh, uh, of the, the detector. For instance, in space, uh, is uh, depending on the resolution of space. Also with the viola jones, uh, it's working very well uh, because you know that our faces are symmetric and so on, uh, but depending on uh, the dimension of the face, of course. So you need a number of uh, layers depending on so, the size of you are looking for. Thank you. And uh, it's more, uh, I would like to ask, you, you mentioned commercial data sets for like, as they have for face recognition, yeah. ferret, FRGC, for pedestrian, but uh, what, how, how you think the, because everybody's trying to do surveillance, but yeah. they, they do in a small scale. So how, how do you see the future, like when you have a data set with uh, 400 cameras acquiring data, like PTZ cameras? Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think people are going to the, in the, into the right direction, uh, uh, in the right way of optimizing the algorithms to, to be able to, mm -hmm. to handle these such big data sets? But I think that now is the time that also surveillance uh, as face recognition uh, is uh, in a stable position to become a commercial uh, uh, product for some specific part. And so for this reason, I see that uh, the big commercial groups, uh, I see IBM, uh, uh, the, uh, Microsoft also, uh, and uh, um, Siemens also, would like to have this common uh, data set. And I think that in the next future, maybe that would be available. The problem is about privacy. The problem is about privacy, so for instance, the only one uh, real data set that uh, has been uh, in uh, uh, in distribution uh, still uh, two years ago was the one of eyelids uh, that, uh, uh, you know, eyelids uh, uh, that uh, have been provided by Scotland Yard uh, in, man in uh, some uh, uh, tube uh, in London uh, and in the UK. But uh, there are so many complaints about privacy that so people d d normally don't do. I think that in the future, I'm sure that that will be some um, uh, group of companies that will put together to have this kind of comparison. But this is the role of university also. The role of university, I think, uh, to, to have a possibility to collaborate together and to say, okay, we would like to do, to do some real benchmark that are not only for, uh, for uh, supporting uh, our solution uh, in contrast to the other one, but also to, to, uh, to validate uh, the commercial system. So. Thank you. Anyone? So I have a question for you. Uh, as I s understand, uh, understood, you, you get some improvements by using uh, the 3D shape. Yeah. Do you think it's a good idea to, uh, I'm not sure if you are, you are updating your 3D model, mm -hmm. but just the, the uh, texture. Do you think it's a good idea to uh, try to deform the 3D, then you can get more reliable? Yeah. Uh, shape of the, for re-identification? The answer is absolutely yes. Okay. Uh, in, in this moment, in my lab, we are trying to use Kinect to create a three more uh, articulated 3D models and using more Kinect uh, to, to have this uh, possibility to have uh, uh, this kind of things. Normally the problem is uh, also, uh, the trade-off between the real-time constraints you have because uh, you know, whenever you have to up the, uh, update the model, also the articulation of the model is become uh, more difficult. And also maybe because sometimes it's not necessary. So it's not necessary to understand the position of the arm to recognize you with respect to him. But uh, I'm sure that having the possibility to modify, to improve this model, there is a lot of uh, possibility to use the model of people, I think. Okay, let's think again.